everyone, welcome back to the Thursday Stretching and Mobility uh, video. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the only piece of equipment that you will need is some sort of uh, stick. So I'm using a lacrosse stick. You can use a broomstick if you just untwist it from the base, if that's possible. If you have a piece of PVC pipe laying around, that's awesome. Um, otherwise, you want to find something kind of in this shape. It could be a little bit shorter in length. Um, and that's what I'll be using today to do some mobility exercises. So before we get started, I'm just going to loosen up a little bit. I'm going to start with some diaphragmatic breathing. So I'm just going to get into lay on my back. I'm going to place one hand on my chest, one hand on my stomach, and I'm going to take three breaths here, but I'm going to take six seconds to inhale. Hold for two and exhale for six. And you guys can carry on with the next one, but think about when you do this breathing exercise, if you have one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach, you want to fill your stomach. So you should feel the hand on your stomach go up and down versus your chest, where we're just getting shallow breathing, usually getting tight in the shoulders and our neck. So just really think about bringing it down. And another thing to start your stretching exercises with some uh, slow tempo breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, it kind of gets you in the right mindset. So kind of just slow everything down before you get uh, these movements in. So I'm gonna get one more of those. down towards the floor and curl up and you can find a different position either super wide might be a little bit easier and then the more inward you bring it the more you'll feel tension on the top of your forearms so still grip the PVC pipe or whatever you have and try to get as much movement without letting go, so you don't want it to fall to your fingertips here. You want to see how far down and back you can bring your knuckles without letting anything else take over and roll it back up. So I'm just going to do about five more of these. This is something that helps uh, if you, when you do front squats and your wrists burn after getting in some of these guys before and after. Again, focus on your breathing here. All right. So now we're gonna move up from the wrists to our shoulders. And what I like to do is I'm gonna use this cooler so that I can put my elbows up here. And I'm just gonna sit my hips back and lower my chest down towards the ground. So the first stretch is here. And try to grip kind of matching shoulder length before you put your elbows up on the cooler. And then drive your chest down. So you might feel tightness in, in different areas. Once you get about 30 second hold here, you can start pulling that bar overhead and out. I'm gonna do about six reps here, six more. All right. 
So a couple of things to pay attention to on that one is keeping your elbows driven in to the stationary point while also trying to keep your chest low. And as you get through the repetitions, you might feel like you can squeeze a little bit more uh, lowering of your chest towards the floor and that's totally fine. Add that and then you can even pause in this position and hold for that tightness, whether it's right on top of your shoulder, in your lats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that, those two I would highly recommend before you do um, any sort of front squat positions if your rack is a little bit uh, compromised. If you have issues keeping your elbows up at the bottom, wrist issues after, so on and so forth. So we've done our wrists and our shoulders. Now we're gonna hit our lats. So now what I'm gonna do is you can be in a kneeling or a half kneeling position. And if you're in a half kneeling position, you wanna hold in the opposite uh, hand of the leg that's bent. I'm gonna move this just a little bit off midline, hold a little higher up, and then I'm slowly gonna just bring my shoulder towards the lacrosse that some ways to help is making sure that you move off to the side opposite hand when I do it I'm kind of shifting my hips back and rounding myself across so that way you're kind of creating a C so instead of reaching straight forward you're really gonna hit the shoulder again which is what we just did but now if I get that angle that I'm getting a stretch in my lats here about 30 seconds to a minute each our lats. I'm gonna move down to my hips and focus on hip flexors. So now what I'm gonna do, if you have two of these, then it might be easier to have one on each side, but for now, I'm just gonna use one. So here, I'm gonna get into my half kneeling position 
I'm gonna tuck my hips under so I don't wanna be super flared here. Lighting that neutral spine. And what I'm gonna do is lean slightly forward and put pressure into this uh, lacrosse stick. And now I'm gonna try to lift that front leg. So I'm pushing into the ground, lifting my foot up, putting it back down. And it doesn't have to be super high. We're just lifting and putting it down. So you might feel a little bit of tightness here. But if you can get like a two second pause at the top, then you're golden. And remember, keep your toes pointed up as much as you can as you lift and back down. Think about 10 reps, each side is good. You can even do a couple sets. So a couple of things that are happening is I'm squeezing my glute on the stationary side and then feeling this tightness right here in my hip flexor as I lift up. Why is this one important? If we're running a lot and you feel like you're dragging your feet, we're not getting that lift, kind of driving through your a little bit higher knee and your stride, your hip flexors could be tight or just weak. So it's always good to strengthen them or just activate them before you do run or hike or anything like that. The more we wake up our muscles before going right into exercise, usually the better result we have. So I'm gonna scoot back. And now I'm setting up my anchor point on one side, putting pressure in, got my, my hips neutral, and I'm lifting. And the first couple might feel pretty terrible. Like, what am I doing? It's a very awkward movement, but pretty beneficial if you can squeeze these into your day. Another key thing is to really focus on the muscles you want to be using, because it's one thing to kind of just lift with your knee, sitting back. We're not getting a lot out of this, but if we can keep this position, Squeezing that glute, lifting through here, tightening of this area, kind of visualizing that. You just feel a lot more tension and you're able to lift. So I'm just gonna get a couple more. Oh, gotta point my toes. And down. All right, so lacrosse stick over your knee. Just like if you had a kettlebell or a weight or something heavier that you can kind of just drive pressure into, move your knee just a little bit further forward than your own body weight. And back. Definitely feel it in my calves today. I'm gonna do three more. right side is always way tighter than the left. And then another thing going from the last video I had, if you can do this barefoot, that is awesome. Kind of using your own body weight and structure to work on your mobility is best without shoes. I'm just gonna get a couple more here. Remember, focus on keeping your foot planted, not necessarily all your weight on your heels, but using your whole foot as you drive your knees over your toes. All right, so I'm gonna grab some water. Now the next thing we're gonna do 
is go into a lunge sequence. So now we're back up. I'm gonna hold the lacrosse stick, my overhand. First thing we're gonna do is step forward. So we're in a half lunge. You could either place your knee on the floor or just hover across. Once you get in this position, you're then gonna try to rotate back as far as you can. Back to center and stand up. And we're just gonna alternate sides. So the important thing here is to focus on breathing. So you don't really want to throw yourself back and rebound. You want to be able to hold that position on your own and bring it back to center. This is kind of a mixture of leg strength, rotation, feeling it in my shoulders. Let's get one more each side. into a reverse lunge with a lift. So now if I'm standing up here, I'm just going to step back and I'm going to bring this right up overhead. So I can start here, stepping back, and now I'm finishing with my arms up top instead of back behind me. And really think about as you lift up and away is that you're pushing towards the ceiling as well. So you actively want to reach as high as you can as you're lifting. Let's get one more. Feels good on the shoulders. All right, so I'm switching. Now I'm stepping back with the left, reaching up high. Definitely got some stiffness on my left shoulder. dominant movements. Now I'm just going to bring my feet close together. I'm going to hold my PVC pie up here and I'm going to start with a good morning. So you can unlock your knees a little bit but you don't want them to feel like a squat. So I'm unlocked and I'm just going to push my hips back as far as I can, chest towards the floor, and then squeeze your glutes to stand up. So you really want to keep tension here as you push your hips back and forward. Biggest limiting factor here is going to be your hamstrings. So if you're super tight, you might only be able to get to here and that's fine. We don't want to start compensating just to get where we want. And each rep, you can work for a little bit more. Really focus on keeping that back flat as you push your hips back, squeezing the stand up. I'm 
going to get a couple more here. Now that we're feeling pretty warm, I'm just going to do a couple more exercises, uh, a little bit, little bit more strength with some mobility uh, before we wrap it up. So I'm going to get into my push-up position. I'm going to angle this a little bit. So I'm in my push-up position. I'm going to lift one foot up. Then I'm going to get a push-up all in one movement. I'm going to bring my chest down and lift my heel up as high as I can. And I'm going to get five and switch sides. I definitely would have been tight in the hip flexors. Good thing I did my, my exercise to get those things activated just for these. I don't actually know what these are called. I'm guessing push up, leg lift, downward dog, single leg. Comment if you know what the proper name is. You're always welcome to leave comments. So next thing I'm gonna do is now I'm just going to get into my side plank position, but I'm gonna leave my knees bent so I'm pointing my knees a little bit down, 45 degree angle, I'm gonna overthink this. So now I'm gonna lift my top leg up and I'm gonna drive through my foot and my knee, lifting with my hips, so I'm here. And now what I'm gonna do is as I reach forward, I'm gonna push my hips back, keeping my legs up, and then I'm gonna spring back. If you need to make an adjustment up top, you're more than welcome to. I'm gonna keep my hips up again. I'm gonna reach like I'm pushing my fingers away from my hip and then bring them all in line again. Get two more. clamshell you want to keep your legs parallel as you can so hips up pushing my hips away from my fingers lining up stretch which is going to be a frog position so my knees are spread out I'm sitting on my heels and I'm just going to reach forward so really focus on how far away you can walk your hands away from your hips but you don't necessarily want your hips to come off your heels so it's kind of finding that threshold and then pushing your hands down into the ground 
and you'll really feel that in your shoulders here. So spend some time, and I'm just looking up so I can talk. So ideally, you would just want to have your face looking at the ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk my hands up just a little bit, still keeping myself planted. So if I'm up here, I want to bring it down. And now I'm going to thread. So what that means is I'm just going to take my right hand and I'm going to reach across my left side. And then really think about, again, pushing the floor, which is going to cause a little bit more rotation here. And you'll feel it in your shoulders. You don't necessarily want to just put your hand there. You get a lot more out of this stretch if we're keeping pressure. Same here too. And you can either hold or you can get repetitions where you reach, bring your hand back up, reach a little bit further. You can get one more here. And switch. Again, before you kind of get jump back into your day, you can take a minute to just do your breathing exercises, kind of make a plan of how the rest of your day is going to go, a little to-do list if you don't have one already. Try to just keep that same feeling of uh, energy as you did when you went in uh, to starting this uh, stretching class. So thanks for watching and tune in to next Thursday's video.